first thing we did from a technology standpoint is really sped up the process from application to hire to onboarding. Uh, we simplified our training program, especially in the heart of the house. We modularized uh, the training. You know, what we're seeing is that uh, there is a bit of a shift in the workforce with, uh, I think, pre-pandemic restaurants were focused on hiring uh, people with prior experience. Now we're seeing more people come into the industry. It's their first time in it, and we want it to make it you know, less frustrating for them, frankly, to get uh, hired. We also just implemented a new uh, wage progression program, and uh, it's been uh, uh, well accepted. It's very transparent, uh, especially when a kitchen uh, uh, person is hired. Uh, we're telling them exactly uh, what their wage progression will be from higher. They'll get a wage uh, increase at 90 days, at six months, at 18, I mean, at 12 months, and then at a year. And uh, we found that that transparency uh, uh, really is helping with retention, especially in that critical first 90 days. So we're actually uh, pleased with what we're seeing in the sense that every week we're getting more applications. And as we said on the earnings call uh, earlier this week, uh, we an anticipate being uh, uh, fully staffed and stabilizing the staffing situation uh, by early summer of this year. Right. Well, you know, that's interesting because I know in your previous quarter you had talked about some uh, labor shortages or the like, and, and you've just gone through the things you've done to try to alleviate that. But on this overall mm -hmm. question, Paul, that, you know, people in your industry simply can't find the workers, I guess you're saying that has not been the case. Uh, I, you know, frankly, I think maybe we've been very fortunate. Uh, you know, I've heard the same thing. But uh, every week we're seeing an increase in applications. And uh, I think partly is... Uh, we're known for having a great culture, for being a great place to work, and I think that has stood us in good stead. And uh, if we continue at the pace we're going, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we feel we'll be uh, fully staffed and stabilized. Uh, it really is about the number of people that are applying and then your conversion rate on that, that hire. And actually, our conversion rate is almost double what it was uh, pre-pandemic. So... I feel like we're doing the right things on the right course. And it also helps if your company is known for having a, a good culture uh, and a place where people feel they're comfortable working. That's, uh, that's actually really reassuring news, and we hope that trend continues, Paul. I wonder uh, more broadly just about uh, menu pricing and as you add capacity, can the kitchen keep up? Or, or do you have to add lines to, to keep up with the seating that you're adding can you just talk about what, what yield is right now and as, as some of these restaurants have fewer restrictions to work by? Well, uh, capacity is increasing. Uh, uh, you know, we are lagging the industry a bit in the first quarter. Uh, we were at 48% uh, as of the end of period five, which we just reported. Uh, outside of the first quarter, we were at 65%. But from a kitchen capacity standpoint, uh, uh, we uh, see no issues. In fact, we just completed a, uh, a kitchen project where we stress tested the kitchen to see what is the ultimate capacity because I think as you're aware, we just added three virtual brands uh, to our system and we wanted to have uh, uh, some good data points as to what is the capacity level. And, you know, the good news is that uh, even as we're reopening dining rooms and adding the, uh, the virtual brands and maintaining a sustained off-premise sales level that uh, the kitchen capacity is a, no way an obstacle to that. So we, you know, our average, uh, average unit volume was 2.7 in 2019. And uh, we see uh, we could grow that significantly without having to make any major adjustments to our kitchen. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.